Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night, 9.24 p.m., March 26th, 2025. Got the wrong date earlier. I'm not for sure how I did that. It is the 26th, so I appreciate uh, the uh, correction. Latest activity, a little bit of movement here across the Southern California region, just offshore of Long Beach. 2.1 coming in here to, uh, looks like the Santa Cruz, Santa Calinga, Catalina Ridge Fault Zone. A couple other smaller quakes in here as well around the San Andreas Fault. Still, no 2.5, nothing above 2.5. It's all small microquake activity out here, but still, seen quite a bit of it. Kind of spread out here in this fashion here, brushing up against the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Up around the Bay Area, one earthquake on the uh, Hayward Fault. That was earlier this afternoon, a little 1.5 and a couple other small quakes there. In the uh, creeping segment, on the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, Northern California, nothing going on there. I kind of find that hard to believe what, that we haven't even had one earthquake here in the last couple days. A little odd. Um, let me double check the trimmer map here this evening from the PNSN. That's the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network that monitors a trimmer. And, of course, everything else up there uh, along the Cascadia, not to mention volcanoes. Uh, we got 138 epicenters of tremor, a little bit underneath the Vancouver Island ranges, also Northern California and Oregon. That's why I'm saying we got a little bit of tremor stirring up, but no resulting earthquake activity. So we'll watch that, see if things don't uh, kick up here soon. Uh, some movement up around Mount Rainier, really nothing big. We checked that earlier. Uh, outside of Victoria, it looks like a couple smaller earthquakes today, 1.1 and a 2.5. Now that is at the... Uh, well, it's kind of at the southern end here of this trimmer event, so that may be a little bit uh, of strain being built up here across the area. That's actually fairly uh, deep here underneath this region. Of course, the Cascadia subduction zone extends um, from the Van or just off the Vancouver Island range here around the Queen Charlotte Sound all the way down south here to Northern California. A little bit of activity stirring up there. Tonight, uh, in the small microquake range outside of Victoria, near Oak Bay, Canada. Yellowstone National Park, nothing major showing up here. A couple smaller earthquakes, but uh, let's just double check that on... Uh, we can use this one right here, see if there's anything going on across Yellowstone tonight or today. Not a whole lot. A couple smaller earthquakes as noted this morning, but since then, generally quiet is the uh, key word out here right now this is some type of interference earlier uh actually i was late last night early this morning but not i don't know what it is it's not earthquakes it's not i don't think it was wind it just looks like some technical interference there on the station uh, localized there to that area aside from that oil field to texas still getting hit uh looking at the latest activity in the um south sandwich trench here look at that I think I pretty much called that this morning, right? You guys remember my update this morning? <laughs> I said to watch for some, well, it, it was actually north here. I was, I was saying uh, to watch some, for some larger activity down here in the South Sandwich Trench. Uh, I was thinking it was going to fill in right about here in between these two older quakes, but it looks like it happened up north here with a 5.7. Either way, a little bit of larger movement uh, following these two quakes down there across the South Sandwich Trench. This one pretty deep, though. 91 miles deep into that subduction zone. So may see a little bit of uh, further activity there in that zone. As uh, far as the rest of the area goes here, there's a spider on me. That was scary. It was just a little baby spider. I don't know what it was, but starting to get that time of year, right? Spring and all the bugs coming out. Uh, spiders don't really bug me, but they really freak out Missy Mimi's. I'm not even joking. Snakes and spiders. Uh, the Alaska area, typical movement up there, really nothing major going on. Let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. Uh, some deeper activity across the Izu Trench here. Look at that 4.1. Pretty deep quake. Um, pretty good cluster going on here across the Taiwan area southward with a bunch of threes and fours. Some larger activity over here across Australia with a 4.0 coming in. USGS not reporting that earthquake. Um... Let me see. I thought I had a uh, a bookmark for that uh, the Australia site, but I guess I don't. 
Uh, I do remember here a few months back them having some uh, similar earthquake activity. I don't know if it got to that large, but uh, yeah, 4.0, 3.8, 2.6 as well striking down there. New Zealand still seeing some activity in the 3 range. Um, some larger movement up along the Aleutian Trench. Canada area, I know I had a couple of folks asking me uh, to cover Canada a little bit more in detail. I try to cover Canada when there's uh, some earthquake activity out there. They're, you know, just like California or anywhere else, the states, they're always having earthquake activity. Um, this is the last 30 days of earthquake activity. Really nothing notable. There's, there's some movement I covered up here across the northern end of the Juan de Fuca plate uh, in a couple videos back. But this um, it can happen on pretty much any given day up here across the area. No unusual movement is what I'm noting here. Uh, some inland activity across the, um, well, that, what, are, what are these little things here? Suspected industrial related event. That's interesting that they note that. That's good. Uh, there's a lot of oil fields out there. A lot of oil fields out there. So they're marking these as uh, not, you know, not natural, but could be man-made earthquakes due to the gas wells that are taking place out there in this area. Uh, Grand Prairie area, it looks like. There's a, definitely a handful of them. And again, that's in the Alberta area, north of Edmonton. Uh, aside from that, some movement way up north here into the Canada area. But I believe that's some older movement, 4.6 there, a number of weeks back. But as you can see, not a whole lot of newer activity. The Most, most of the newer movement back over here across the Explorer Plate. Uh, right there, shy of the Cascadia subduction zone. I'll try to link this uh, link Canada in more often here in my updates. Pending they have earthquake activity, I know they do, but um, it's you know somewhat somewhat quiet up there. Uh, far as the Santorini area goes, let's go double check that. See what's going on here. Yeah, still got some earthquake activity. Obviously, two hundred two hundred and thirty one epicenters here of earthquakes in the last week i don't see anything coming in right now a little bit there across the santorini area colombo volcano and where that earthquake swarm's been striking there in the uh last couple months uh latest earthquake uh, turkey area it looks like a 2.2 there's some twos and threes out there fairly recent three-pointer but a number of twos out there in the mix of uh earthquake activity around the santorini region no no unusual activity, just uh, it's still having some movement. It's, that's what it's doing. Nothing major here across the uh, uh, Campi Filigre fields either. Just a couple of very small earthquakes there in the last week. No unusual activity to note. But of course, you know, there's always earthquake activity out here. Always. If we added the number of earthquakes that strike out here on any given day on the globe, I, I don't even know what it would look like. It would be chaotic looking. So, uh, you know, the, the plates are always in motion out here, always producing earthquakes. Uh, Hawaii, I, yeah, the um, eruption kicked up earlier today. Let's go over and check that out. Okay, thank you. See what's going on here with this real quick. As uh, far as the latest update goes, this was put out fairly recent. Well, this morning it looks like. Had some fairly large fountaining going on there from the episode of eruption here. Episode 15 fountaining was preceded by over 100 cycles of lava rise and fall and vent overflows and whatnot. Uh, 600 foot high uh, fountaining going on. That was uh, earlier. I believe we've come to a halt though. Let me double check that and see. Oh, we're wow, well, it's still going on. We are still going on. Someone noted, though, look at this brown color uh, in the uh, images here. This one's not all that clear, but it's noticeable. That is very interesting right here. L makes me think that there's some deeper areas uh, below that's shooting up some steam. And what that could mean here is that we could see maybe something in terms of more uh, eruptive type style underneath this area. I mean that that's a that's brown. That's not. Uh, it's something I haven't seen here on the Kilauea eruptions here over the last 15 episodes. So 
I uh, gotta watch that. Still got some beautiful fountaining going on. 90 degrees. I'm guessing that's. Uh, I don't know where that thermometer is, but it would be much hotter than that if it was very close here to the crater rim. Uh, but that is definitely interesting here. Do they mention anything about that? Let me see. Um. I don't really see anything about it. Just your typical textbook um, information, but uh, we'll watch that and see what uh, happens there. That brown stuff there, it's just kind of odd. Either way, some earthquake activity out there. Uh, deformation data, let's take a look at that because that's important. And well, obviously we're going down, right? Going down. That's the uh, inf the uh, deflation event. That's draining the uh, area below quite nicely. We're past the previous level, so this could continue for a little while. But that I can see that brown stuff that's coming up with it here. Um, not for sure exactly what's going on, but we'll keep an eye on that uh, space weather activity. Looks like we had an M-flare. Wow, goodness. That's a that's a shocker. Let's see what we got here. Wasn't really expecting any M-flare, but it looks like an M2.0 or so. Um, where did they come from? There we go, AR4043. So that's going to be... Uh, I guess it's that sunspot over here on the northeastern quadrant of the sun, 4043. That's about the only one I picked earlier today. Looks uh, a little bit of complexity going on. Also, the sunspot over here trying to uh, form a little bit. But uh, we'll keep our eye on that one. Maybe I produce another M flare, M flare or two. Everything else, though, is pretty quiet. Uh, as far as the aurora activity goes, well, looks like that's mellowed out a little bit here in the last few hours. But could see some auroras out here, um, depending on uh, if the space weather activity ramps back up or not. It's, I don't think we're really looking at too much activity here uh, following the arrival of that uh, high-speed solar wind stream from that massive coronal hole. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, this was interesting here today. I was watching this on the weather radar. They issued a uh, severe thunderstorm uh, watch up there for Oregon, Washington, right? They had a tornado threat, wind, and some large hail threat. Well, as of right now... Let's see here. Let me double check on my phone. Uh, I don't believe they've had not even one severe thunderstorm. There wasn't even a, not even a thunderstorm that was of noteworthy value. A lot of lightning, but no severe thunderstorm. So I guess that's good news. Um, but it goes to show you the dynamics out here along the West Coast are quite different compared to states over here east of the Rockies where, you know, you got a lot of moisture and heating going on. Um, but expect some thunderstorms there through the evening. Uh, the severe weather threat, I, I'm pretty certain that it's pretty much died out now. The watch expired, and again, there, there wasn't even one, not even one severe thunderstorm up there with that event. Uh, tomorrow, day two, a little bit of slight risk category there across Texas. Texas knows how to get the hail done. Uh, and that's uh, in the forecast there for tomorrow. A little bit of wind and the slight chance for some tornado activity there in the green areas. Uh, aside from that, let's take a look here at the long-term models. There's the, uh, it's a beautiful low pressure system here. Let me show you guys, where'd it go? There it is, this was earlier, just as it was getting uh, dark out here along the west coast. I'm sure it's upgraded by now. But this is a massive, beautiful low pressure system it looks like a hurricane in a way we just got some heavy duty winds down here in northern california a little bit of clouds but that's going to move inland uh and bring some more rainfall and whatnot across that area of the pacific northwest a little bit for northern california it looks like maybe yeah maybe on third well that's thursday so maybe thursday night looks like after that uh, some more precipitation coming in there for the west coast with a more decent storm look at that some impressive rainfall rates there for Northern California, my neck of the woods, as we head into the middle of next week. I'm okay with that. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good evening. Seismograph stations out there all look pretty quiet, calm, and clear. 
Um, just kind of keep an eye on things here. See what plays out. Have a good evening. We'll see you guys back out here for the Thursday morning update.